and we're live with the Digital Drop Podcast, 9 a.m. weekdays here on Twitter. Andrew Perrin, how you doing? I'm doing great. I just hit go live, like being live on Twitter again for another week, five more episodes. I'm, I'm excited for this. That's right. We wake up early in the morning. We're not tired at all, right, Ross Dillon? Not at all. I was up at 5.30 this morning because I couldn't sleep. So that uh, wave of tiredness is probably going to hit me about 11 a.m. right when things get busy. Perfect. And that's a great setup for today's topic. That means you're going to be tired, you're going to be mentally fatigued, and I can take advantage of you in business. So today's episode is how about is how to avoid being taken advantage of in business. And more specifically online business in this episode, but we're going to be talking about scenarios where you're working with a company, you're working with an individual, maybe a potential sponsor, maybe a potential uh, client who is asking you maybe for too much up front and not paying you. People are trying to get a whole lot out of you and not giving you the money you deserve or not giving you the recognition that you deserve for your work. We have been in these scenarios so many times. Andrew Perrin, have you ever been taken advantage of in business? Uh, man, it's like every time, like almost every time I find a cool new gig, this this happens. So here's the scenario, guys. You get an exciting new potential gig, right? Uh, and it's online and it's you know doing something that you're really, really excited about. And the first conversation goes really, really well. The second conversation goes really, really well. Then you find yourself having a third conversation and a fourth conversation and a fifth conversation. And they all seem to be going well, but nothing's really happening. And then they want deliverables. So they want to know, uh, first of all, they want a proposal, which that is actually supposed to happen. You should be making a proposal to kick off a business relationship. Then they want something else because that proposal doesn't quite clarify some certain items and they're not really sure about certain areas and they, and they, they need to be sure, right? So before you know it, you've put together a whole marketing plan for them and you haven't made any money and it's been three weeks. That's the scenario we're talking about. Yeah, so that's basically somebody asking you in this example in the case of marketing and it, and it's, it, and it can apply to all sorts of fields of work, whether it's graphic design, video editing, marketing, uh, whether it's doing a sponsorship for someone and whether it's even um, you know doing a contract gig for a company or even trying to be an employee and working on a new project. One way that it's a huge red flag that we've discovered if you know you're gonna be taken advantage of is when the person you're working with keeps asking you for meeting after meeting. They keep wanting to talk about it and they want to talk about it and they want to talk about it. They want to pick your brain on it over and over and over again. They want you to put together a plan and rework the plan and rework the plan. That's a huge red flag in business. That That's the way the relationship is going to be in the long term. And they're just asking you to give tons of work up front without paying you any money. And you think that's going to stop today? You think you're going to be able to change that client or that potential employee, that potential sponsor who's asking you for those free tweets, who's asking you for those free streams and those free shout outs? You think they're going to stop asking you for all of your time for free? And the answer is, Ross, what do you think it is? Uh, the answer is a very loud no, they are not. In fact, now when companies are uh, seemingly losing money because of COVID-19, it's probably going to start happening a lot more. That's right. And so time is your most valuable asset. And so you might be like, oh, well, how hard was it for you to really be on a call? Well, time is your most valuable asset and time is money. And when you're doing sponsorships, when you're getting gigs, uh, your time is what is going to be making you money. And you have to allocate your time to either go acquire new clients, to service current clients, uh, or to try to double down on the current clients that you have. And if you have new potential clients, essentially, that are asking you for more and more of your time, but they aren't paying you yet, you have to figure out when to pull the plug on those relationships because they're unhealthy relationships. Just like in a personal relationship, right? I don't know, you guys may have that brother or that friend or your mom or whoever it may be who is a really needy person and they need you all the time and they're constantly getting into trouble. And maybe you have to pick up your brother because he got drunk too many times. And then he has, then you have to get him out of jail. And this is just an example, right? And then you have to t constantly take care of this person in your personal life. And there comes a point where they're just a huge drain on you, right? And they're actually dragging you down. They're actually holding you back. The exact same thing can happen in business relationships. Because the way that people behave in their personal life is often the same way that they behave in business as well and vice versa. And these sort of uh, people that will suck your energy and suck your time and take as much from you as possible, 
that will carry over into business as well. And so these are what I like to call people to avoid. These are people that you pull the plug on. You don't talk to them ever again once you discover that they're this type of person because they're going to be a negative influence and a negative impact on your life. I mean, parent, what is the point where you kind of pull the plug on one of these such relationships you're talking about where they're sucking everything out of you and providing very little in return? What's that breaking point where you say, you know what, I gotta go. <laughs> so for me, uh, it's like normally if I see three red flags, I'm like, I'm done. I'm willing to let one or two go, especially if I care very much about an opportunity. And here's here's a situation that you find yourself in. And this is what you have to be careful about is if you find one that you really, really like, the other party in, in your business, you know, negotiations will most likely be able to discern that in some way and, and use that against you. So you have to be careful on how much you want this opportunity and how much you let that translate through in business. Now, you do want it to translate through some because you do want to seem eager. You do want to seem excited. People hiring other people want that in their new employee. But at the same time, you have to be careful that it's not used against you. And what I'm talking about is you get these rose-colored glasses where you see red flags, but you ignore them because you really, really want this and you really, really need it. And... Whenever you're doing that, you're going to be wasting your time. So write down, if you see a red flag, write it down. And when normally when I get to three, I am done. I'm willing to let like one or two slide, but I will pay attention to see if those first two red flags come up. But once you hit like a third red flag, I'm, I'm done. I'll drop it. It's it's just like ghosting a, a really toxic, you know, um, online troll or something like that. Just cut them out. They're done. Don't ever talk to them again and move on. Yeah, you might have lost a really cool opportunity, but how cool would it have really been realistically if that's the beginning of the relationship was was were those red flags. You're going to have those the whole way through. It's not going to be what you thought it was. So don't mourn the loss. Cut it and move on. Makes sense. And if somebody's taking advantage of your, uh, you know, a lot of you guys that are watching out there right now are creators where you're thinking about doing something that you're passionate about and you want to quit your job to go do it. And so you're going to be willing to take that leap of faith. You're going to be willing to accept a lot of red flags because you want that dream to happen so badly. I can tell you from experience, there are plenty of people out there that want to take advantage of your emotions and basically use you for free slave labor to build their business uh, ba based on your passion. And have you be, you know, a member of their community and have you be an ambassador for them. And they'll tell you how valuable you are and things of that description. And they really just want you to be free slave labor, free slave labor uh, for their business. So, Ross, there's other ways that people can take advantage of you, right? And another form is payment, right? So you could be already doing a gig for somebody and you could have issues where they're not paying you or they don't let you know that they are not planning on paying you and they can use money as leverage to take advantage of the business relationship that they're in with you versus time, which we just told you a moment ago. Moment ago, Have you ever run into any situations where uh, clients have used money as leverage to take advantage of you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the biggest advantages or disadvantages that has happened to me in the past two years, probably it's about two years ago, a very, very big name comedian wanted to work with me, wanted me to take up their social media marketing and strategy. And I agreed to it. There were, like parents said, there were definitely red flags in this. But because of the stature of this comedian, I couldn't get out of my own way. And that was a huge mistake on, on my behalf. So what, what turned into, okay, you know what? We're going to do 1500 And these are made up numbers, by the way, not the actual numbers. Uh, we're going to do $1,500 a month. Uh, you know, you're going to run the full strategy and you'll start tomorrow. We'll pay you at the end of the month. Okay, awesome. Do it. And then all of a sudden at the end of the month, after far exceeding all, all of the goals, that fifteen hundred dollar price tag all of a sudden came down to five hundred. And then when I questioned it, it's like it's like, well, we didn't, you know, get you get every excuse in the book. And because I was dumb enough to not have a contract signed, they got away with it. And that's just one of the many ways that you can be taken advantage of. And I know we all kind of have different views on this, but in in certain scenarios depending on what your line of work is and you know what you're setting up your contract for, this is why I always suggest getting paid up front. And if they don't want to pay you up front, 
then you know work something out. Say, okay, well, let's do half up front now and we'll, we'll do half at the end. And then if they still refuse to do that, even because they're talking to you based on your reputation, based on your resume. So they know what you're capable of. And if they don't want to do that, then to me, you know, wrong or right, that is sort of a red flag. Yeah, that makes sense. Contracts, Perrin. So that's the red flag that uh, Ross brought up here. He didn't get a contract. He put in all the work and then he got paid a third of what, uh, in this example, a third of what was promised. So sh do you always need a contract to work with a client? Is, is that something that you'd recommend moving forward with any major client? I mean, having to negotiate contracts can be overwhelming. It can be onerous at some points. How important is the contract? I think the contract's important. Um, I, I would say, it, I know that that can be daunting and, and sometimes you might want to be lean. I would say always opt for a contract. If you can't, for some reason, get some sort of agreement going. Like have some sort of written agreement, at least an email where the other party is agreeing to something very specifically where you're spelling out what services you're going to provide. You're spelling out what you're, what you are going to be paid and they actually say, yes, I agree. And you get them and at least an email, but really you should be a contract. You should try everything you can to get a contract because the, the time will be well spent in terms of getting the contract in place because then you will actually get paid. Because what's the worst example? You don't get a contract and you waste a month of your time and get nothing or you spend an extra week to get a contract into place and you can actually get paid. What, like, which, which area are you losing more time in? So don't waste your time. Getting the contract in place is the most important thing. Now, we've been talking red flags a lot. I, I want to see, can we give the people watching like some concrete examples of red flags? Here's one. We're talking about payments. Anytime you're trying to put a, pay, a, a contract or an agreement into place and the other party is very, very nitpicky about the, about the amount, about the price. And I'm talking like if you're, don't don't be unreasonable. So if you're you're, you're charging like a thousand a month, almost no matter what you're doing, a thousand a month is not that much. If they're nitpicking and they want that to go lower, and they're really they seem to be really stingy about it, and let's say you do actually finish a month's work and they do pay out, but they have like they have issues over it where the amount that you charge wasn't quite something something or whatever. If they're that nitpicky about payments and getting you paid, that's a red flag. What are some other examples? Oh my gosh, is that a red flag? If somebody's <laughs> nitpicking over small dollar amounts, that means that they're going to be a micromanaging person and they're gonna be the kind of person that's gonna be a succubus on your business life. They're gonna be nitpicking you. See, when you see a little nitpick from somebody on one little area of business, they're gonna nitpick you on all the other areas of business and that's the point where you pull the cord and you eject out of that jet in the middle of the sky. It doesn't matter how high up you are. You need to get away from that person as soon as possible because they're going to be a terrible person to do business with. Um, I have an example I want to share of, uh, I won't name the company, but uh, it's one of the top esports developers and publishers in the world. And they, I ended up working with them without a contract uh, and with one of my colleagues, and they asked me to develop their uh, Twitch and YouTube strategy to promote their game, which ended up becoming one of the top 10 esports games. And we did exactly that. And we put together the strategy. It was one of these examples that we talked about earlier. We did the calls and uh, we gave them everything. And then the whole idea was we were gonna give them the strategy up front and then we were gonna do, we we're gonna execute it for them. And that was the contract, that was the gig, right? We we're That was the gig we we're gonna get and we we're gonna be able to run all of the media for this big eSport and it was gonna be big and exciting. And it was the scenario we talked about earlier where they asked that we had call after call, uh, you know, telling them the strategy. They were so friendly. They, they made it sound like the money was gonna be no problem. Uh, you know, we'll spare no expense. Uh, and then all of a sudden they ghosted me and then they went ahead and executed my strategy without me. And uh, it was very successful because I knew what I was talking about and we knew what we were doing, uh, but I made zero dollars. And I spent, uh, I don't know, probably like 50 to 80 hours putting together this strategy for them. And it ended up making their company millions, maybe tens of millions of dollars as a result. So the point of this story is to tell you that contracts are incredibly important upfront. And once you reach a point where you've had a few conversations with somebody, 
uh, let's say three meetings, in-depth meetings about a topic, and you're really starting to dive into strategy, you're really starting to dive into what the actual plan will be for whatever it is that you're talking, that you're going to do, whether it be a sponsorship or services you're providing, at, at that point, you just need to say, look, you know, maybe we don't know exactly where this business relationship is going to go, but we're going to get a contract in place and you're going to start paying me a retainer to have conversations with you about this, or we're not going to have any more conversations. And if they say, whoa, 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 I thought we were buddies and I thought we were X, Y, Z. And you say, you, you can come back to them and you can say, look, I understand that these conversations are going well, but my time is valuable. And so if you want to continue to have my time, you need to pay me for it and see what they say. If they say, whoa, 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 let's just talk one more time, or I don't know about this, pull the plug. Never talk to them ever again because they were never planning on hiring you. If they like what they've seen after a handful of meetings with you, they'll instantly hire you, and they'll instantly pay, and they'll instantly do a contract. It's that simple. There is no gray area. I'm telling you, there is no gray area on this subject. If somebody likes working with you, they will not hesitate for a second to pay you to continue to work with them. If they were never planning on paying you, they'll give you the whoa, 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 whoa. The whole whoa, 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 whoa is the biggest red flag, and it's the easiest way for somebody to take advantage of you. That's what swindlers do. That's what hustlers do. That's how people hustle you out of cash is by kind of stutter stepping to get more out of you until you figure it out and you leave. And that person is used to, the reason why they're so good at stutter stepping is because they're used to taking advantage of people and they've done it hundreds of times. But you haven't experienced it hundreds of times and that's why they're able to pull it off. You get it? Get it. I like the way, so if you're looking at, this can be complicated and, and you're saying like the way they'll talk, they'll be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. They'll do it in language where you won't even realize that that's what they're doing. So in order to not get lost in that kind of game, I like the way you said it, AWOL, in terms of looking at your time. Be, uh, value your time and be confident in terms of charging money for it. If you feel like these meetings are taking up a lot of your time, then charge money for it. That's a service you're providing them. You're consulting with them. Every, you're already providing a service. You're consulting with them in meetings however often. Now, the first couple until you get a proposal in place, I think you should offer up for free, but anything past that, that's your time that you could be spending doing something valuable. So if you find yourself giving up your time for free to these business people over and over and over and over again, then there's something wrong there. There's definitely something wrong and pull yourself away. Another example of a red flag, and this is when you get to the contract and you say, uh, we were talking about them saying, whoa, whoa, whoa on payment, but this can happen in the contract. If you start to bring up contract and they're like, Okay, yes, the contract sounds great. We'll totally do a contract. Let's do this and then I will take I will take care of it. And then they don't they don't take care of it. And you're like, "Well, how how, how you know, how are you going to sign this contract?" They're like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, we got it. We got it. We got it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got it taken care of." And then they just they don't do it. A contract does not take long to sign. It literally takes 5 minutes to sign. So, if they ever give you, "Yeah, I will do it." They're not going to do it. They can easily do it in five minutes and otherwise they're just going to try to grift you. So if you find yourself, you put a contract out there and it's just sitting there for any long period of time, that's also a red flag. Ross, right. another, I, I want to focus on something that you said earlier, and we've kind of focused on money here because generally that is where people get taken advantage of the most. But another one that should be considered is your time. Take all, take the money aspect out of it. Your time really is the most valuable thing that you have. And you guys are going to think I'm talking about one situation here, but I'm promise I'm not because this actually has happened to me more than uh, any being taken advantage of financially in any way. After, after you get the payment, after the contract signed, you send them over a list of things you need to uh, you know, fulfill their request, fulfill your service to them. And they don't get you anything. They keep making excuses for why, oh, you know, I'll send it over to you in a minute, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm. You know, say like for me, like with comedians, like I need your videos. I need your stand-up videos. Every recording you have, every promotional picture you've ever taken. Give me access to all your account. I need everything and I need it right now to get going. And this has happened to me a few times where then a month later, I still don't have the stuff. And now they're questioning me for why I haven't gotten anything done. That's a huge red flag. And not only that, that pretty much just destroys the relationship almost right away. And um, 
And you end up when you don't have the materials to work with, when you don't have, when they're not fulfilling their side of the bargain, uh, financially disinclude, discluding financials, you know, your time, it becomes doubled or tripled than we're working on them because now you're having to go and hunt for stuff. You're having to think up new ideas and new concepts for what you can do for your client. And then, you know, it may go from you getting paid $20 an hour to at the end of the month, when you break it down, it's like, $5 an hour because they didn't get you what you needed to be able to do your job successfully. Yep. You didn't get the support you needed from the client, the potential sponsor, whatever it may be, the developer, the publisher, et cetera, et cetera. That makes sense. That's another way to take advantage of people. Yeah. You sign the contract with them and then you're like, and then, then they don't help you at all. And then you're like, okay, I'm ready to do the job that we all, that we talked about. Where's the you know, you, you show up for your first day of work and there's an empty desk there and they're like, yes, there's, there may be, it may look like there's an empty desk, but I expect you <laughs> to have that report on the end of my de- at the, on my desk at the end of the day. Be like, I don't have a computer. I don't have internet. I don't have anything here. Be like, yeah, that's your job to worry about. See you later. Bye. Uh, that type of person uh, is, is clearly just trying to hit a number by working with you. They're just trying to please their boss uh, by signing that deal with you. They're just trying to sweep whatever you're doing under the rug, and maybe they even want you to fail. Uh, so that's another thing to keep in mind is that um, some people will hire you and or they will bring you on board with a sponsorship or they'll do whatever they're going to do with you in a business relationship. They might even uh, you know, bring you on a contract, whatever it may be, and they will want you to fail from day one, uh, whether they realize it or not. And that can be for a plethora of reasons. Uh, but one of the most common reasons is a lot of the time when people hire people from outside of their company to do something, it's because somebody who's already in the company tried to do it and it didn't work. And so when you have to bring someone from the outside in to try to do something for you and you failed at it, you see that person that's being brought in as a threat. And if they succeed, it makes you look like you're incompetent. A lot of people kind of see other people that way. And so they will want you to fail for a reason, for, for that reason. And so the same thing is the case with, we're talking about contracting gigs, but the same thing is the case when if you're an employee in a company and an initiative comes up and you know someone else in the company has tried that initiative and now you're in charge of it, red flag. So if something fails in a company and then now you're in charge of something that fails and then now it's your chance, now it's your chance to try to make it work, huge red flag. And the main thing that you should be watching out for isn't the project itself, it's the people involved in the project. And anyone that was involved in the past on a project that failed is somebody you should keep a very close eye on because there's likely that half of them or more will want you to fail. That's just the way it is. Because most people are jealous, most people are worried about looking bad in business and they don't want someone else to succeed where they have failed. Unfortunately, that's human nature, and most, and at least half of people I've experienced in business are like this. They just don't want you to succeed because it makes them look less valuable. But at the end of the day, what makes everybody look more valuable is if you failed, you dusted, you dusted your shoulders off, you, you dusted yourself off, you rolled up your sleeves, and then you figured out a way to make it succeed. At the end of the day, the business wins, and your boss will see that, but most people don't see it that way. They see it as me versus this other person. And so keep that in mind. That's one way to be taken advantage of in situations is a person that wants you to, fa- to fail may feed you bad information. They may drag their feet like Ross is talking about on giving you resources you want. They may try to jack you over on your contract or your payment. They may even try to start drama in the office about you. There's all sorts of tactics, all of which are attempts to have distractions to prevent you from succeeding. And if you're starting to see these sorts of red flags in a job you are in, pull the cord and go get another job because that is called a toxic work environment. And toxic work environments do not change. They don't change fast enough uh, for you to be able to stick around for years for such environments to change. Look, we're coming up toward the end of the episode here. I'd like to know any closing thoughts from you guys before we end this thing. We've talked a lot about what bad work relationships can look like or bad client relationships. We didn't really provide a good work example. Maybe we can do that on a future episode. 
um, because there are great examples uh, of that as well. So guys, let us know if, if that's something you'd like to see in another episode. I really like this topic. I like talking about it. Hopefully you found some of this useful. Yeah, and just to follow up on what AWOL had just just said about toxic environments, the biggest, the biggest thing that I can provide you on how to deal with a toxic environment, especially when you're in a situation because a lot of people are now where you have to deal with it because your livelihood depends on it. Paying your rent depends on it. The best thing that you can do is the opposite of what they're doing. Put your ego aside. Step step aside. Let them say what they have to do. You just keep, keep your eye on the prize. Stay focused. Don't let your ego get the best of you to where you respond negatively and make the situation even worse. Just keep looking forward. Keep your eye on the prize. Focus on the work. Yeah, I like that. I like it. And, uh, and it may be hard for some of you to do. It's hard for me. Yeah, it might be hard for some for our audience members to do, but you have to look out for yourself first and foremost, uh, because a lot of people aren't going to have your best interests in mind. And that's something that I've learned time and time again. I assume the best in people, which is a good policy in life. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of people out there uh, that don't have your best interests in mind. And it's okay. Uh, it's, it's really important to recognize that early uh, before your feelings get hurt and that's that end of episode very sad note to end this episode <laughs> on but it's a lesson it's a very important lesson to learn especially when you're doing work that you're passionate about well that's it for the digital job podcast be sure to check us out on youtube for all the video replays and you can subscribe on every single audio podcasting platform there is that ever existed including podbean for some reason sure we did that one we'll see you in the next episode and hopefully the next topic maybe will be a little more positive perhaps. Adios amigos. Go out there. Don't get taken advantage of and go chase the dream and avoid those pitfalls. See you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye.